Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. My name is KPZ. You are here on the home of the slightly above average ship review. I finally got a match worth showing you in the Japanese here, a premium battleship, the Heisen. The Heisen didn't exist. It allegedly was a variant of the uh, A140J3, blah, 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 which led to the Awami. Allegedly a four-turret variant of which no records I could find existed. Anyway, we're on Crash Zone Domination Match in the Heisen. You can see Yamato-type hull there. And then you've got four three-rifle turrets, two to the front, two to the rear, in a standard ABXY configuration. While we're moving out, let's go over to WoW's builds. Damage record, uh, 234,059. The base XP record, 3637. Uh, maybe at some point we'll have a peer comparison of the Heisen. Um, really quickly, go to wiki.wargaming.net. Shell velocity of the HE, 834 meters per second. Why did my computer do that? Uh, same for the armor piercing and the max dispersion, 230 meters. And someone is screaming for somebody else outside, so just ignore that. All right, um, so the Heisen is a ranged build battleship, in my opinion. I would only recommend Takeo Takaji unless you've got a pay-to-win commander, maybe of the Azer lane or whatever variety. I would not use a secondary build on the Heisen simply because it doesn't have enough guns to justify that. And they probably can't reach out very far if you built it that way anyway. So I would consider this kind of like a slower-ish Congo. Maybe if you play this like the Congo, uh, you'll have a lot of success. I would play it at medium to long range. Obviously, I'm going to target cruisers and then broadside battleships. We do get a lot of opportunities for broadside battleships in this match, so you get a pretty good idea of the accuracy. I do have a fully maxed commander in here, uh, Takaji, and I'm using Acerlane Sharnhorst and Angelo Iacchino. So, full accuracy build, although I don't think uh, I, uh, my inspirations are fully maxed. Sharn Hor AL Sharnhorst is not fully maxed. So, f first salvo against an Otago. And here is a destroyer, GJ Merker, which I still don't have yet, unfortunately for me. Uh, sorry this video is late. I just forgot that Christmas was on a Monday this year. Um, I got a lot of responses to my last video and I want to make it clear I am not rage quitting the game that just made me rage quit for that day I'm sorry that was not more transparent about that other CCs opposed to videos implying they're quitting World of Warships Legends I'm not trying to do that at all uh, so it was just that one game all right uh, what is that thing Katutsov we'll shoot at him and uh, he maneuvers, so we don't really hit him at all, which is just awesome. And so we're going to back up here, and we're going to be engaged with the Katutsov for a little bit. One-sided engagement, and whenever you have the opportunity to take part in a one-sided engagement, I encourage you to do that simply because you're not being shot back at. It's free damage. So we're going to back up. The Katutsov is very concerned with the cruiser and the cap. And we're going to use that opportunity to HE spam or AP spam and do a little bit of damage. And no, although I'm spotted probably by the destroyer, no one else is shooting at me. So you really got to take advantage of these moments when you have them. All right, Katutsov flattens out. And then I believe he is going to start turning in. And so we will adjust our aim. And now that he's bow on and has no health left, it is a great time to start the game off with a kill pinch. First blood kill number one in the Heisen. All right. 
Um, so we sped up simply because I don't want to receive a broadside salvo. In full disclosure, I think I may have mentioned this in another video, not having a lot of luck getting any good matches in the Eisen. So, all right, broadside Frederick de Gross. We will fire out on that and you will get to see the grouping and dispersion. Um, I need to lead him a little bit more. So, all in all, I don't think it was terrible, but I just need to lead him a little bit more. And the great thing is, again, the Frederick de Gros is going to be looking at someone else. So, I'll have the ability to fire at him at, at will, basically, um, without, you know, any trade offs and damage. In a lot of my other matches, I found I was getting focus fired and stuff like that. The ship is not stand up well to that. Anytime you got exposed those rear two turrets, you're in danger of being punished. And uh, therefore, you have to choose between doing half the damage and maybe taking damage or doing all the damage and maybe getting Citadel. So I'm not in love with the Heisen by any stretch of the imagination. But this match is really an ideal circumstance of what you can expect to do performance-wise with these guns. And that's literally all the Heisen is about, is the guns. And they're, and they're low-caliber guns. They're just four tens. I mean, it's the same caliber guns as in the Mutsu. Yep, tier 7 chip, tier 8 chip, pardon me. Yep, 410 caliber guns. I'm a tier 5. Yep, tier 8 chip. All right, anyway, enough complaining. Back to the shooting. You can see he was starting to turn away a little bit there, but we'll take it. Uh, disable a turret. I think that's the second time we did that. So we're having a lot of luck there. And working on our reload here. Got about 7 seconds when I first started talking about it. And last salvo at the Frederick de Gross, number one. Because there's another one, I think, in this match. And yes, kill number two. All right. Hey, look at that. Is that a new ship? It is a new ship. These people are paying 1,000 doubloons to test the Borodino. Well, let me tell you something about the Borodino. I just looked at it really quickly in the port. It has two triple turrets on the front of the ship. So when you show broadside in the Borodino, you are inviting a kiss to the Citadel. And so we get some good shots in on the Borodino. And there is the kiss. And he's still, he's still alive. So we'll just get our reload on. Again, we're shooting uncontested at a Borodino who's moronically, stupidly sailing broadside. I just can't imagine why you would think that would be a good idea in a Russian ship. It's not. Newsflash, it's not. All right, um, another salvo out on the Bordino. And as the shells go over, another hit to Citadel. Kill number three. All right, we got three cheap kills under our belt. And we're just hanging out, waiting for our next target to stumble out from behind the island. I don't like this blue ship's positioning, but I am just going to keep my mouth shut, be a sacrificial lamb, eat those torpedoes, which he does. Uh, by the way, the battle, we're tied in terms of ships. We have a 60-ish point lead in points. All right, Vanguard, another broadside battleship. Well, I mean, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> And our first salvo, uh, another Citadel hit, knock out another turret. So, I mean, under ideal circumstances here, the Heisen is not doing too terribly bad. Um, but again, I just don't trust the caliber of this guns, especially at this tier. Um, now, he's moving away. We're almost reloaded, so we're going to fire this out. And then it won't do a lot of damage. We're going to switch to he and try to get some he out there. And I'm very aware of the destroyer still existing and I really hope this cruiser will go do his job and hunt down that destroyer. That may be a recurring theme at the end of the match. All right, we couldn't get that kill pinch. That's quite all right. Let's move on with our lives. We're going to uh, hang a left around this island 
and I am aware the destroyer is spotting me. Hey cruiser, how about some help? How about some sonar? How about some HE against the destroyer? How about you kill the destroyer? Now it is a heavy cruiser, it's an Azuma, but uh, still, you know, cruisers kill destroyers. That's the way this shit works. All right, there is the destroyer, the GJ Merker. And he is HE spamming me, and we are gonna get our turret around here. And I would love it if this Azuma would try to do anything at all. All right, HE out on the GJ, and we knock, we, we knock out another turret. All right, here comes some torpedoes. I am going to largely avoid these. I can't not say the same about the Azuma. I think you hear the bongy torpedo noise back there. He ate a couple of torpedoes. All right, moving into the cap circle here. And I'm looking around and I'm like, I would love to hunt this destroyer down and kill him, but we've got more important things to do. All right, here is an Otago B. I hate black ships and I hate white uh, winter ships and you should too. We disable another turret and I'm gonna, in a minute here, turn and unleash the full fury of the Heisen onto this hapless Otago, which is run aground. And I'm anticipating more torpedoes. Who's trying to sell me something? All right, you can stop texting me anytime now. Um, so anyway, we shoot and we get another Citadel hit. Kill number four on the Otago. More torpedoes incoming. All right, couple of enemy ships out there. I'm ignoring the destroyer at my own peril. Here comes some torpedoes that will eventually kill us. And we're now flooding and it's over a minute until our health comes back, so we're dead. All right, but while we're dead, we are still on the hunt for a Kraken, ladies and gentlemen. Anchorage, first turret, do a little landscaping on that island. Second turret shells, not quite sure where they end up. But basically, we are going all out here to kill the Anchorage. And meanwhile, the Azuma is sitting on his ass and not trying to do anything to kill the GJ Merker. Uh, let's see, another salvo here on the anchorage as we continue to flood out. There it goes. We had our spotter plane up in the air, allegedly. And will this be enough? Kraken unleashed! And a Confederate medal, and another Citadel hit for good measure. And we flood out and die. All right. While we watch the Azuma get a cheap solo base cap and then flail around, not really trying to kill the JG Merker, let's go to our peer comparison here. Uh, let's take that off and put in this and put in that and put in that. All right. Peer comparison at tier eight looks like there's about, I don't know, 20, 25 chips. Because uh, they took away the numbers on Wild's Builds, so I don't know how many there are. All right, hit points. Uh, number one, Savetsky Soyuz, 88,100. Heisen, wow, way down there. Iwami is like number five or six. Heisen is like 10 or 11. 75,900 tied with the pants main battery reload Awami tied with Republic and Marlboro at 25 seconds the Heisen is way down here third from the bottom 38 and a half max speed number one is the Duncan Giuseppe Verdi Marco Polo Ruprecht Alsace Heisen uh, middle third, 29 knots. Main battery range, number one, Frederick Gross, 18.9. Heisen is in the top 10, 17.4. Armor-piercing DPM, 
Marlboro, 422,400. Heisen is in the top 10, 260,060. That is your stat comparison. As the Azuma, who I didn't care for the way he played this, is going to pretend to attempt to go kill the destroyer. Oh, I accidentally ran into the island. So I don't have to do that. And the match ends. I mean, we won. I just don't like that kind of play. That's the bottom line. You should have been more aggressive. All right, we're going to get a couple of milestones here. And here we are on the victory screen in the Heisen. Confederate medal, first blood medal, and the Kraken Unleashed medal. 113,575 total damage, 5 kills, 5 hits to Citadel. Over 327,000 silver, over 17,000 ship XP, over 18,000 commander XP. Pretty pleased with those two last numbers. Uh, in the Heisen. And some oil. And a stupid crate that I don't need. Alright, and look, the ship I complained about was the best player on our team, allegedly. Probably do that solo base cap. Value of solo base caps, folks, right there. Alright, here we are. Three medals, five big kills. Uh, it's my best match on the Heisen. What can I say? Alright, back in the port. Upgrades. Aiming system mod one. Damage Control System Mod 2. Concealment System Mod 1. Oh, pr please rate Legends. Can I rate your interruption? And now it's going to throw me off here. Just ignore this stuff. I probably should have just cut it out of the thing. Alright, Main Battery Mod 3 for reload in our fourth mod slot. Taking a look at the loadout, two charges of the repair party, four charges of the spotter plane. We're running the epic battle booster for main battery range and movement speed. The Type 9 permanent camouflage and the unique Heisen flag. Taking a look at the spec, 75,900 hit points, 37% torpedo damage reduction with our build. Jesus effing Christ, phone. All right, four triple, four 10 millimeter turrets, 20.1 kilometer firing range, 30.1 second reload, 39.1 second turn time, HE shells, 6,500 max damage with a 30% fire chance, AP shells, 12,100 max damage. Three sets of secondaries. The first two sets have a reload, uh, uh, pardon me, do 2,100 HE shell max damage, with an 8% fire chance. Uh, the first set of 2x2s reloads every 6 seconds. The second set of 6x2s reloads every 7.5 seconds. The third set of secondaries, uh, 3 triple 152s reloads every 12 seconds, 2600 HE shell max damage with a 10% fire chance. The range of all those secondaries is 5.2 kilometers. All right, AA defense, first two sets of secondaries are dual purpose. They're your longest ranging AA. Your best AA does 120 damage per second. All right, moving on to maneuverability. Honest. 29.9 uh, knots, 880 meter turning circle, 18 second. Rudder shift time, that's not great. Concealment. 13.3 on the surface, 11.2 from the air, 15.1 when firing from a smoke screen. Take a look at the stats. They're going to be terrible, I'll tell you right now. All right. 15 standard battles. We have only won five of them. Main battery accuracy, just 35%. Uh, all eight kills have come by the main battery, and five of them came in that last game. Terrifyingly bad kill-death ratio of 0 0.5. And the last match you saw was clearly and easily our best match of all time in the Heisen. And it's also not very good at shooting down airplanes, despite those lofty AA numbers. All right, here in the armor viewer, I do see stuff I like. I don't know if this is considered a turtleback. I wouldn't consider it a turtleback. Uh, we'll put the torpedo plating. That's all below the waterline there. 
Putting the bow back on, no armor belt, 32 millimeter bow. Turrets and barbettes. Well, at least the turret faces are sloped and heavily armored. The rear of the turrets are heavily armored, probably to balance the fronts of the turrets out. No complaints about that turret armor there. Uh, casemate, you've got an armor belt that I will get to eventually of 356 millimeters on the side. And that armor just catches on fire. So not great, but those turret uh, turrets do have a good angled faceplate there. So that's a bonus. All right, Takeo Takaji fully maxed out. Phoenix increases the hit points restored by the repair party. As mentioned, 16-3 Iachino and 16-3 Scharnhorst for shell grouping and accuracy. Uh, row 1, Flamble Cannoneer. Row 2, Crisscross. Row 3, Marksmanship. Row 4, Reaching Out XXL. In essence, Fight Fire with Fire. It's a full range build with all the accuracy you can get. And that's the Heisen. Like, comment, subscribe below. I'll see you on the next video, everybody. Thank you for watching.